guys welcome back to my channel oh my goodness i'm so excited i'm not going to jump too much because this is quite a low ceiling but we are in the kitchen i've got my bowl ready um there's a water stain on the bowl which is really not attractive but today i'm going to be baking the works christmas cake and when i say christmas cake it's not a traditional christmas cake um i am making Monteza cake um i can't actually eat this so i'm literally making it for everyone at work so at the thing tomorrow evening they're able to have a wonderful cake i'm sure it'll taste great but i can't test it out myself but anyway i'm gonna start first thing you need is obviously your weighing scales these ones tend to be a pain but I'm going to put my bowl onto my weighing scales just as it is I already noted down a few months back when I've been starting to make cakes a lot more the weight of my bowl so that when I weigh it all together I can then see I can work out exactly how much to divide it into each tin I've got my ways anyway first thing you need is 400 grams of stalk I tend to use stalk just because it's a lot lighter, smoother. I need this entire tub, I think, that's left in this tub, and then some. Yep. Because I used this the other day when I made a lady at work with's birthday cake. That was amazing. It was an Oreo pieces cake. I'll insert, if I can, a picture here. And yeah. So that was that. So this is 300. That was left in that tub and I brought and did buy a secondary tub. I'm sorry if my kitchen looks a bit messy behind me. It doesn't look too bad. You can't really see too much. <laughs> I just breathed in something in the fridge. I don't know what that was. I might just be in the cold air. So I need just another 100 grams. So I've got 300 in here. I'm going to get myself a little metal spoon. I need a little metal spoon. So this cake is just a basic chocolate sponge and then the Maltesers actually go on the outside. And so I crush them up in a blitzer and I put them in the icing and then I'll put some as decorations on top. I just hope it turns out okay. I get really anxious when I make cakes because of the amount of fails I've had in my lifetime when making a cake. I just remember the time that I made a cake and the outside was burning and the inside was literally raw. It was literally still a liquid and the outside was like browning really bad. And the thing is the oven was on the correct temperature so I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, I just need six grams of butter, man. Ooh, there we go and then what i'm gonna do this is actually my boyfriend's idea i panicked when we first did this i'm gonna stick it in the microwave for just 10 seconds to soften the butter i do 10 because i don't want it melted i just want it softened so that i'm able to mix it or the best thing is just to keep the butter out of the fridge but I'm not clever like that and then to that once it's softened i'm going to add 400 grams of light brown sugar and then mix it together until light and fluffy and then i'll come back to you so it's easy so i have mixed together the butter and the sugar incorporated as much air as possible this is what it looks like it smells great the smell of light brown sugar reminds me of fajitas and every time I ask someone they're like you're so strange it doesn't it smells like sugar anyway the next ingredients that we need to add in we need to add in eight eggs and we need to add in 325 grams of self-raising flour now I tend to do it in portions of I just knocked my bottle lovely stop thank you nice stop thanks 
So what I do is I split it into four. So I'll do two eggs and then say 75 grams of the flour, another two eggs, more flour, two eggs, more flour, two eggs, the rest of the flour. And then we incorporate the cocoa. So I'm gonna add in the eggs, add in the flour, and I will show you again in just a moment. I do want to say that each time I crack the eggs, I wash my hands straight after, so I'll crack both eggs and then go and wash my hands. And as I have an empty pot of butter, as in it's completely empty, there's nothing in it, I'm going to put the eggshells in here. See, it's empty. I'm going to put the eggshells in there and then, yeah, wash my hands, mix it, put the flour in. So I'm going to do this now and I'll get back to you in just a moment. I will also leave the recipe down in the description so that everyone that wants to make this can make this because I just think it's amazing. So I have put in oh, <laughs> the 325 grams of self-raising flour and I have put in the eight eggs. As you can see, it's still quite a wet mixture and it doesn't look finished and that's because it's not. If you're wanting to make a basic sponge, then I'd add in 75 grams more of your self-raising. But as I'm making it chocolate, I'm going to add in cocoa powder. So I would add in 75 grams of cocoa powder, but this all depends on how rich you like your cakes. If you don't like it that rich, I would substitute some of this for some of this. <laughs> some drinking chocolate. So my last cake I did 65 grams cocoa, 10 grams drinking chocolate, just because we don't want it too rich. That's what I'm looking for, I'm gonna say bitter. <laughs> too rich. You want it to be nice tasting, sweet, so I add some of this in. But it's up to you how much you put in, if you wanna put 10 grams of this in and 65 grams of this in, it's completely down to you. But I'm gonna do 65 cocoa, 10 drinking chocolate. I'm gonna mix it in um, to my mixture and then that's pretty much it. But once I've done that, I will show you the mixture and then I will divide by three. I'm only gonna do a two layer cake for the ladies at work. So that means I'll either have a single layer cake for home. So for example, for my partner, he can eat it. Or I can make mini muffins and then if we see anybody, we can just hand them to them or you can eat them but yeah also three layers won't fit <laughs> into my cake tin which i'm going to be transferring the cake over to where it needs to be so yeah so you want 65 grams cocoa 10 grams drinking chocolate if you like it just perfect i'd say otherwise it's all down to you experiment so the mixture is all mixed in Oh, look at that. How gorgeous is that? It's a big bowl full of chocolate mix. I'm now going to split this into three. So it's about 536 grams, roughly. And I'm going to put... I put tinfoil in. I would prefer to use baking powder, but I've run out. Lucky me. So I'm going to put in... My voice. It does this all the time. I'm going to put in 536 grams into my two lined tins and then put it in the oven for 25 minutes um i'll put it in the tins and then i'll show you what it looks like in the tins um and try not fill it too much because it does rise up and you don't want to have too much in your tin because it'll just overflow over it and then you'll have a mess in the oven to clean and trust me nobody wants to do that the extra work is not worth it so yeah. And here they are, the two, they're pretty much halfway like full. And there's 542 grams in each one I did. And then with the leftover mixture, which is here, I'm going to put some muffin cases into a muffin tray and just use it to make little mini muffins. So these two tins now go in the oven for 25 minutes on fan 160. Um, I'll try and work out, I think it's roughly gas mark four or five, but that's just me guessing. I will try and remember to put it in the description below 
If not, just do a fan oven 160 conversion on Google. It'll take milliseconds. I know what to do. Alexa, 160 degrees fan oven in gas mark. 0 0.88. Well, that's helpful. I'd Google it. <laughs> so I have just got the cakes out of the oven. Um, I left them to cool for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I got them out of the tin. I used a knife and really carefully went around the outside. It didn't really need it, but I do prefer to do that just in case. And then I tipped the tin out and it's one of those loose bottom tins. So the cake came out and then I just used the knife and really carefully lifted the base so that it wouldn't dent the cake. Um, I really wish I video getting out the oven because they look really good. But I will show you what they look like now. And here they are. I feel like this little bit here, the flour, like the chocolate powder didn't get to it. I don't know how that managed to happen, but it's fine. And then this is the bottom, so I'll show you how they're sat. They're quite thick cakes, and obviously they'll go on together. Love it. So yeah, now they're done, I'm going to leave them to cool completely. So I'm going to go do some more Christmas wrapping and then I will move on to the icing and decorating, which I'm so excited for. I think I'm going to have to message my boyfriend and ask him to pick up a bar of milk chocolate because that's one thing I don't have and I think I might drizzle it. So quite a lot of my cakes recently have been like drizzling chocolate and making like the drip effect and I love it. So I'm going to do that, I think. That's if he can get hold of the chocolate. If not, mm, we'll find a way of doing it. It's fine. But yeah, I'm going to leave him completely cool. I'm going to do some wrapping. And then I'm going to give it about maybe an hour. Possibly. A little bit more. I know they're cool very quick. But I prefer them to be like very cool before I'm putting the icing on. Because that's another mistake I did when I used to make cakes when I was younger. I didn't leave them to cool. I used to like get to this point and then put the icing on or wait like an hour and put the icing on and it's still too warm. And obviously the icing just drips off and it ruins the cake. So yeah, I'm gonna leave them to cool, go and do my wrapping and I'll get back to you when it is time to ice them. I'm so excited. So you can tell it's got a lot darker. I'm just about to start making the butter icing for the cake. The cake's fully cool. You're going to need your stalk again. You're going to need 250 grams of stalk, 500 grams of icing sugar. And then I'm going to blitz up and add in three quarters of this bag. Um, that's what I'm going for for now. Anyway, I might add more. I did buy two big bags just in case. But yeah, I'm going to make the butter icing. Um, I'm going to soften the butter like I did earlier and then add in my sugar 100 grams at a time and then put in the blitzed up Maltesers in at the end. And I will show you what it looks like then. So the butter icing is all made. And here is the finished cake. I've added some icing to the top and sides and the Maltesers inside. <laughs> Got the chocolate drip going on. And there it is. So that is the finished cake. I hope you really enjoyed it. It's definitely a good one, I think. I, I mean... I've made better, but it's not the worst I've made. Ignore the hair, like it does this after a long day. But yeah, fingers crossed they like it tomorrow. And if you did like this video yourself, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next 24 days Christmas video.
Bye.